1969, so that's like 36 years ago. Who is it? Oh, to the Green Bay Packers. Here's what he said. One of my favorite quotes of all time. Quality of a man's fight is in direct proportion to his commitment to excellence regardless of his field of endeavor. So what you're learning out here, if you're gonna be a pipe fitter, you're gonna be the, the best pipe fitter. If you're gonna be a teacher, you're gonna be the best one. Lawyer, doctor, have a great effort today. We're gonna see if got anybody wants to work. Twelve in a row. That's how we got the name, the Long Green Line, way back. I came there, and we had 15 guys in a row that day, and they all had green suits on. The guy from the Elmer's Press and says, geez, look at that Long Green Line. And now, 50 years later, it's still going on. Way now before I lose it. It's all our summer workout sheets typed. How many you got? One? I don't know. I got like 15. Already? What period are we in? I got 12. First, we just started. Let me see that. You ever got 12. <laughs> what period are we in? I got about 20 of my athletes out in the halls with clipboards. Our goal is to get 50 to 100 freshmen every year. I don't care what a guy's like. You take a little fat guy that's no good as a freshman. And he works hard. In his senior year, he's one of your best guys. I got a, I got a star right here. <laughs> Who was it? Right there. Ah, uh, you. Well, look at you got Hitler already. You only got. It's the same line. You got Mussolini <laughs> and Stallion. Now, what did you ever got anybody on there? How many names you got? I got seven without them. If that camel wasn't on. I'd really give you a blast. <laughs> <laughs> Dribble tits, Mus Mussolini and Hitler. <laughs> Stalin. <laughs> I knew I shouldn't have sent you a jangle. Okay. <laughs> and you're helping him. I'm recruiting kids. You must have been I'm the guy that got Mussolini and Stalin. Yeah, they came back. All right, get out there and beat the bushes, man. All right. All right, good work. You made my whole day, Mussolini and Hitler. <laughs> every guy, every day, gets tender, loving care. You're not going to get that in the classroom. You're not going to get it in the calf. You're not going to get it in the halls. Every single day that you come to this school, it's a place to go where you're cared for. So my first statement of the year, every year now for the last 15 years to my guys, this is your team. I'm empowering you to make your team the best team it can be. Are you signed up for, on a, on a cross-country list? No? All right. Well, pretty much uh, our program, we have uh, 24 state titles. We're going for our 25th this year. Uh, we have a really good team. Last year, we finished one, two, three in state. This year, we hope to either repeat that excellent feat or uh, get, get one, two, three, four. This has been called one of the greatest teams in the history of the United States of America, this team this year. And looking back, you know, 10 years down the road, looking back at this time in high school, I mean, how awesome would it be to say that you were a part of something like this? All right, so is there, is there anybody that is not doing a fall sport that would like to uh, I'll get that kid up there. give it a try. Anyone? Hands up, we'll, we'll come to you. We're, we're that, we give that good a service. You must think every boy in this high school is a cross country runner. But she's laughing like hell. I said, what do you mean? She said, your boys are, every guy has signed up for cross country. 
I said, no, kid. She was happy as a lock. Oh, Jesus, my new pants. And I got mustard on it. Look at my wife. She just bought these for me. God. Coach, how's the uh, top seven looking this year? We got over 30 guys that could make the top seven. First four or five are pretty solid, but six and seven are... A lot of guys could be six or seven. Jesus, she's going to catch me on that. God dang it, just bought it. Every year, the more, the better it is for him. He takes pride because, say, if he has 100 signed up, well, you know you're going to get about half that amount or a quarter of the amount. So he always bills on freshmen because you never know. They may turn to be all Americans. See the light grow for these Twin City kids. They green me like grow all these Twin City kids. Top 10 pretty kids trying to rock the mic. If I'm one of them, the other nine won't sound right. Up a little bit. The gist of the article is has a more serious bent on it. They made some sort of a football reference in terms of a ferocity they have mid-race, the surge kind of thing. I'm not digging the cross legs I, thing. I was just saying. Okay. <laughs> and I think they understand the simple equation, that old school notion of if you work hard for things, things can happen. It shouldn't surprise you if you have success. I definitely want to run in college, you know. I mean, I'm still living the dream right now, and I feel like there's so much more for me to offer and so much more there to bring out in me in terms of talent and my running ability that I, I totally want to continue doing what I do. They came home one day, beginning in fifth grade, uh, indicated they want to run cross country. And uh, I says, okay. I had one stipulation for him. I said, you can do it. You just can't quit. Within the week, Matthew did want to quit. And the reason was rather unique. It's because as a fifth grader, he couldn't beat the eighth graders. What do you feel is like the single greatest moment with Mr. Newton that you've had while here at York? Probably last year at the state meet when we went to one, two, three, and just that was his goal all year for us. And then coming back after the uh, race was over and we'd cross the chute and we'd walked back to the team area and Mr. Newton was just standing there waiting to give us a hug because we'd finally gotten the goal that we wanted all season. What's next? You know, you listen to Mr. Newton talk about some of the things and possibilities and you know, I can't even I can't even imagine it. It's so cool. Hi, I'm John Fisher. I'm an all-conference runner, and I run for Mr. Newton. Yeah, my little brother runs right now. He's got a disability where it's PDD. I mean, that's kind of a form of autism that he has, where he has a complete photographic memory. Where did you get that shirt? You steal that off me? No, no, no. It was, it was purchased last year. I got it last year. OK, John, just checking, John. That's his family right now. There's Big Marchese for, uh, for Mike, and there's Little Marchese for Brian. We got twin one and twin two. His biggest challenge in life is his communication skills and his language skills and just relating to people. He, ta he taught us that we should believe in ourselves, like go to a happy place. Think like you're, think positive. Does that help you? Mm-hmm. I learned that that cross country is like life. Now going back to when John was five years old and, and a psychologist told us that probably the best he'll ever do is push a broom. Um, what an amazing story. I mean, you know, he's just, he doesn't know his limits. Uh, John will, he will blow all of us away. The first thing I want to tell you is I'm trying to recruit new freshmen to come out for cross country. We just won the national championship in Portland, Oregon in December. Our guy McNamara was the national champ. We've got geniuses on our team. You've got stuck in your algebra, your geometry, that'll help you. We've got six football guys who quit football to come off across country. Because we win and we have fun. So you have a problem with somebody at school, they're giving you a hard time, you tell me, I send our football guys out. Everything ends right there. And every boy who comes on the team, if he's Polish, the old coach comes home and says, ah, we've got another Polish lad on the team. I said, well, you take good care of them. Yeah, we will. He said, he always tells them that, ah, oh, my wife is Polish, and I'll take good care of you, otherwise she'll kill me. You look like Sean McNamara. What's your last name? You're Boston. You know in Polish, that means sausage. My wife is Polish. Are you Polish? Uh, no. You're a good man. I'm picking you first because I think you'll say yes, 
and you'll come out and try for three days. Add up, baby. Now, wait, I got to find it. And your name is Joe. That makes it even better. Anybody named Joe is all right. That's my first name. I'm joining, man. Huh? I'm joining all the way. Way to go, baby. I will see you tomorrow right after eight. Kid knows I try to give the same amount of tender, loving care to the 160th guy as the first guy. Some coaches only deal with their top guys. And then the little guys feel left out. I was a little guy in my athletic career. I was ever a big star. I want him to feel part of that team. Even if he never scores a point. Tomorrow, you get out of school after eighth grade, right? Yeah. All right, after eighth grade, go to your locker, get all your books, in your gym suit, your dress, and right in the lobby, right there. Mm -hmm. Good man, the boss. Good man. We signed up 85 new freshmen and we got about 25 or 6 that came. Some of them are coming Monday. We've got to get the rest of those guys and find them and get them here. But I'm proud that you guys came. They're going to take you right over to the track. You're going to jog one lap with them. They're going to bring you back, get you in the locker room, go home. Can't wait to be a part of the team and uh, run all the time because I like running and I want to get a lot better at it. It was good. I ran one lap. A couple people ran a little bit faster than me, but uh, mostly I, I ran pretty good. Just hoping maybe I, my name could be known for like being runner, because like it's one of my passions, like playing saxophone. But he, he did say he, uh, that anybody named Joe is all right with him, so I was kind of excited about that. I want to shake your hand tonight, so you know I I met you, and that's a tradition. You check in every night and you check out, and I shake your hand. I know Joe will be all right because his name is Joe, and that's great. And kielbasa, that's Polish for sausage. How about it? Perfect. Glad to have you. Wilson will be here already. He told me that. Yeah, on the team. How about Snarks? But I love my job being around those kids and trying to turn them in the right direction. And when you turn them in the right direction, you see their life change. But if I can change one life, then it's very worth my time. Newspaper article came out today, there. We ranked number one in the Tribune, number one in the Sun Times. Oh, great. Got a picture of the twins in both papers up close. Terrific. So it came out really good. Terrific. The coach at uh, Naperville North, David Racy, said that everybody's running for second, that York is very good. And I, better, I said it's better for him to say it than for me to say that. But we got, we got ranked where we should be. So I was really happy. And we had a good workout. Terrific. And I'm done recruiting. Hi, Dad. How you doing, Dad? When you're driving, I am really concerned. Uh, I am a pro golfer. Go. <laughs> Bend the brim straight up. It's hot, man. Hot. All the ladies want this. They want this outfit here. This is all the Salvation Army's fault, because they take these clothes in. These clothes should be burned. Yeah, it's easy to run a 407 mile, but it's not hard to crush the tee off the ball. <laughs> <laughs> We just all decided just to be with each other. We all have just so much fun, you know, being out there. We're all there to compete against each other, and we're all there to compete with each other. And we've got great team chemistry. We all hang out, you know, on the weekends or during the weekdays. It's almost intriguing to see what's going to happen. If our guys just worry about themselves and go out there and do it, they'll be fine. Uh, the thing that I just want from the team this year is just, I just want to be able to trust them. And we've run together for the past four years, and now it's basically our time to shine together as a class. I'm just excited just to see what's in store for us this year. My goal is for my senior year. My goal is to win state meets. To win state. Make all state. To bring another state championship to Mr. Newton.
cross country is a team sport in the state of Illinois that's run in the fall. Touch the toes if you can. Hey, one minute! One minute, and we line up over there. Uh, it usually takes place uh, in a park uh, around the grounds of a high school. Everybody runs the same distance, somewhere around three miles. You're running against other guys, but you have to have a team to win, and the way you win in cross country is the first five athletes across the finish line from your team are scored. You take the finish place they get, add it up, that's your team total. Uh, and like in golf, a low score wins. And then you compare your five athletes with the five athletes from Team X, Y, and Z. We have a rule at York that no other school's got. I don't give a freshman cross country guy a uniform until he's running the first meet and made the course without walking. If he walks, no suit so that when they leave as a senior, they don't want to give that suit back because that suit means so much to them because they earned it and four years later they're going to graduate and they want to take that suit with them. Now I want you guys to listen. So we got Connor Chadwick over. Raise your hand, Connor. All right, he's right there. I'm going to have him stand up in a minute. When he first came to me, he couldn't run 20 yards without walking. Yesterday, I watched him the whole race. He ran that whole freshman race, and somebody look at the chart. I think he beat three, beat three or four guys. Four, he beat four guys. He beat four guys. I want him to stand up, and I want you guys to give him a standing up. That's all, achievement beyond all of them. His mama told me that when he was born, they didn't think he'd ever walk. And when Connor came out, he couldn't walk and chew gum. My goodness, the improvement that he's had in one year is like 200%. He was put in braces when he was four because of his cerebral palsy. The braces helped keep him from walking on his tippy toes. So probably from age four until when he decided to go out for cross country, he's had the leg braces. Connor wears these every night. He'll wear them every night until um, he stops growing. And the bones grow at night, and if the muscles and tendons don't grow at the same rate and stretch out, then he'll tippy-toe walk again. And he stays in those until he gets stronger. He knows what he has to do. He takes care of himself. He has plenty of rest. He eats right the right foods. Joe Newton gave him a bulk of the foods to eat and what not to eat. He can't do what the other guys do. And I usually have a kid on my team assigned to him that he works with Connor every day. So we just kind of go with the flow. How you feeling today, Connor? All right, here's what I want you to do. Now don't do too much walking. It's such a thrill to see the guy there. I'm up tomorrow. My mom might not have, might have to work. So? So she might not have to, she might not be able to come. Oh, well, yeah, okay. Yeah, we can't have rules for you and then rules for the other guy. If you're gonna be here, you gotta be. I just wanna give you a quick rundown of the rules. It's very simple. The first rule is you gotta be here. You're allowed one unexcused absence. On the second one, we say thank you very much. If you still wanna be here, you're gonna be a manager. So the rules are the same for everybody. If you're gonna sign up for something, no matter what it is, you gotta be there and you gotta be there on time. And that's something that transcends cross country and becoming a great runner. That's nice and that's wonderful. And we're trying to win title number 25. But what's far more important is making men out of these guys right here. No drugs, no drinking. Those are things that are nothing that a real athlete wants to put in their body. Quick rules, tardy, unexcused, and do the best you can with what you got where you're at. Every day I check each guy in myself. I give everybody a nickname, so that's a very personal thing between he and I. John, you checked in? Yes. Grab a seat. Yeah, let me, I want to check. So when he gets here. Where the kids all sit, they chit chat, they're bonding. Then I say, quiet. The meeting started. Quiet. We got a meeting. All right, practice tomorrow is at East End at 7 a.m. Don't be late, Jones. So I, I know which guys on my team I can yell at. Which guys need tender, loving care? I'll say he knew he had, I had it in me. 
say he believes in me, probably. You think he does? Yeah, he, yeah, I think he does. Coaches have to learn you can't pass off your good guys if they make reason for you to put them off the team because they're your star. We're there for them. And all they got to do is come out and be their best. And that's all we're looking for. And then I, I end up with a little saying for the day, my thought for the day. This is my thought for the day. It's not really a thought. It's kind of a no-brainer. However fast you are running, run faster. <laughs> that is a no-brainer. And the way I try to promote leadership, I have six groups of training. Seven in the top group, seven in the second group, seven in the third group. So that's 21 guys. That's my best 21. Then the next group, I might have 15. When I get down to group six, I might have 40, 50 guys in there. That's all my slower guys. Group six! Group six is a bunch of fun-loving, hard-working kids that enjoy the cross-country sport. Group six! Set! Go! Not a We're not the best guys, but we're here trying to positively contribute to the team. Those guys don't have to be out here. I mean, they don't have to be out here running, you know, six, seven, maybe even 15 miles a day. They do it because they love the sport and they want to be around. Hey, let's go! 30 minutes! Freshman year, I played football. Didn't really like it that much, so I decided to come out for cross instead. It's cross country, the whole atmosphere, the whole team, everybody, Mr. Newton, uh, everybody all together, it's a lot better than football was. It just inspires everybody else to yeah. see guys who shouldn't even be here. They should be playing football. And, you know, I mean, they're 300-pound guys, and they're going out there and trying just as hard, if not harder, than everyone else. And that, that's special. Only seven guys can run a state meet. You got 170, 60 guys on your team, but they're having fun. Remember, you can make a choice in life. Be average, be good, be great. We got 20 guys that want to be great because they're coming in the morning. We got 190 guys that choose to be average. That's your choice. Mama didn't make it, you didn't make it, the preacher didn't make it, the teacher didn't make it, the coach didn't make it. You made it. If you choose to be average, that's all you're ever gonna be in life. Here's my thought for the day. Your mind can make you train. Your body can create power. But only your heart can make you a champion. And we got a lot of guys that had faint heart yesterday. Good race. I'm paranoid because you had a little injury last year, so now I got, oh, I got the tendonitis, I got the jack of rod. You just got to just run. To you, I was hurt with the stress fracture. I think I only ran one meet. I'm trying to see Doc. I mean, I can't go out there during the week. I've got to work. I get home at 6.30 every day. And I'm going to try and make an effort to go out there because the man is like, you know, you need an ultrasound. What time does he open up in the morning? I've got physics honors, AV Gov, world history honors. I've got all honors classes, oh, first department. Yeah. Is that ultrasound stuff is magic? Tendonitis of the brain. Of the brain? I knew when I was nine years old I want to be a coach because I love sports and I want to be around sports. Well, it's been a good life. I've been coaching 52 years. Winning is 100% pure ecstasy when you know you did it. Hard work, enthusiasm, dedication, sacrifice. Multimillionaires wouldn't know what that's about. They're just worried about making money. Coach Newton is successful because he can take just ordinary, regular, everyday Joes and turn them into phenomenal runners. He sees the, the smallest amount of talent in somebody and makes it into a mountain of talent. I met Joe Newton in 1982, 1983, and I met him through my father, who was my coach. It's very, very regular for me to be in America and meet somebody in a very senior position who was coached by Joe. So Joe has had a profound effect on the lives of a lot of people. I've only missed one day for sickness in 50 years of coaching. Why should I retire when I'm doing something that I love and they give me love just like I give them love? I know every top coach probably in the world, because I've been all over the world, and I've had 52 years' experience. This guy is one of the greatest coaches this country's ever had, high school, college, whatever. He belongs up there with all the good people. That's how good he is. It's kind of like a special group of guys that they're always members of the long green line. We win together, we lose together, and it's like a massive family where everybody's important. 
to our team and to me, and if they work hard, good things will happen. You're always being stimulated, you're always being watched, you're always being encouraged, and it didn't matter if you were the best guy or the worst guy on the team, that, that you were, you were under, under his guidance. You know, records can come and go, but this is something no one can take away from me. I was part of something. And the bigger picture is that you're part of York High School, something that everyone knows about. My job is to make them the best they can be when they're with me. He always, you know, welcomes you with open arms. He always tells us, if you ever need anything, a phone call for a job or to get into college or anything, he'll do that for you, and he won't think about it at all. I'd just go right to him, because I know he'd help me out. What Coach Newton did for me, couldn't put a price tag on for any of those athletes. It's because, you know, at the end of the day, there's one guy that believed in you, and that was a coach. The secret of success in life is for a man to be ready when this opportunity comes. And some of you guys are looking at this list. I mean, the first 20 guys on the day, on the day could make the top seven. Like Mr. Noon also told us all, there's three things you can't get back in life, time, lost opportunity, and spoken words. I have something serious to tell you. And then, like, I just couldn't, like, even, I couldn't even say it. He's like, what? And I'm like, uh, I was drinking last night. He's like, what? I'm like, I was drinking last night, and he caught me, and I was caught. And he's like, who caught you? And I said, principal and vice principal. Then he's like, well, can you practice today? I'm like, well, no one told me no. He's like, well, what's the punishment? I'm like, I don't know. I, I just wanted to tell you first. He's like, all right, well, I appreciate that. I'm not going to chew you out. I know you need enough shit already, so. He's understanding. It takes years to build trust, and you can blow it in 15 seconds with a dumb decision. Two of our stars, El Drinko and El Stanzo, right in front of El Principal. I mean, how dumb can you get? Well, I'm sure the phones are ringing all over town yesterday. We stand up here. Mr. Newton stands up here, gives this inspiration, talks about what you need to do to be successful in life every day. <laughs> Not once a week, not once a month, at the end of the season, you know, okay, yeah, by the way, be a good person. Every day, do the right thing. Unbelievable. And it's terrible because we have 200 people on the team. And there's, I don't know, however many people involved. Very small number. But then that drags everybody through the dirt. Just like when that small number of seven people win a state title, it brings everybody else up. Yes, I'm a part of that. Woo! That's such a great feeling. This is not a great feeling. What a shame. I'm done talking about that because I couldn't sleep last night and my phone was ringing yesterday. So when you do something wrong, you affect not just you, but the whole thing. It's like a ripple effect. You throw a rock, it's only a little rock, and I threw it right there, but the ripple goes all the way over there. So make sure you do the right thing this week. Just like a bad ripple occurs, a good ripple can occur as well. We only got seven weeks till the state meet. So for the next seven weeks, you gotta <coughs> get your sleep, you gotta eat right, you gotta run in the morning, you gotta lift weights, you gotta stretch with your ropes, and you can't do anything stupid. I knew when I met Joe Newton that, that it was gonna be a good fit for Connor. I knew that he understood what Connor was, where he was at that point, and what he was capable of. Now I don't have to worry about people asking me if anything's wrong, because I've had to deal with that for a long time. They asked me what was, what's wrong with my legs, and just said nothing. Oh, Balmer, where you at? You're in Ellsville. One more week? You better go and get your homework. Bayless, near failing. The cross country team at York, the boys team, has got the highest grade point average of any sports team at York. Burn, near failing. Marquesi Bryant, that's our next near failing. That's real good. Real good. You know what 
know, I said to reporters early on, we stink. If we get anybody canned for anything bad, or anybody flunk out, or anybody hurt, we're dead. One can, one flunk out, who's next? Here's my thought for the day. When the going gets tough, the tough get going. How the hell can you be near failing? Marquez, how can you be near failing? Oh, it's my science class. <laughs> <laughs> you better get it up. <laughs> hey, this is Coach Newton. I'm in my office. It's 1.30. And uh, I just want to tell you that I just love that kid. He is just When I had first found out that they knew was Mr. Kern had pulled me off the track and said that we needed to have a meeting with the principal. Where's Coach Kern? He's in the meeting with the principal right now, but something happened a while ago. We'll get over there and stretch it out. Hey, who's got a ruler? Anybody got a ruler? I know Brian carries one. I'll just look in his pocket. Brian's in the principal's office too right now. Uh, I was over at the track, and I was informed by the principal that I needed to bring Brian Marchese uh, back over to the school and to her office, and that she had some questions for him. They had asked me what happened the night, and I kind of explained a specific story to them. They're like, well, how would you remember that? So after about an hour of just nine, and I finally admitted to it, and then um, my parents were called, and they came in. Myself and two other runners um, were expelled from York and kicked off the team. We saw a house under construction. When in, and we were looking around in the house, one of the guys we were with lit the house on fire. And the uh, house and neighboring houses were burnt down and damaged by fire. I got 10 phone calls saying, where was Marchese yesterday? Where was Jones yesterday? I say to him, check with the principal. I got nothing to say. I've been told, don't say anything to anybody. So tomorrow, you're going to be out there, guys you know on our team say, where the fuck's Marchese? What happened to Jones? Just say, talk to our principal. I can't talk. I can't say a word. Uh, you got that? And you're going to get all kinds of questions. It was kind of hard. I got the duck over yesterday before other people. As soon as I got to Cosmo, she said, where the hell is Mark Casey? Where's Jones? What? She said, I can't talk to you. I'm going to say they weren't feeling well. Sick. Just tell them I can't talk about it. Why lie? I know they ain't feeling well. That's actually the truth. All this awfulness that happened, it can't go back. It's, it's done now. But now there's a chance for two more people to step up put themselves in the top seven. Are you going to be there and stay? Are you going to get back in there? I don't know. Whatever happens, happens. Uh, but I can feel it'll be good things if we go and attack. We're rested and uh, excited. I think I was going to go to New York. Uh, somebody said, hey, what's the matter with uh, you know, 
guys getting kicked off the team and what's going on there. And the teacher who overheard one of our guys, I don't know who it was, he just said, I'm not talking about that. We don't talk about that. So whoever that was, internally you can say, man, I did the right thing. Here's the workout after the meet, providing we have time. One mile, 10 one tens, one mile, sound off. All right, Charlie, anything you want to say about the meet or anything coming up? Or... All right, no. Clyde, anything you want to say to the guys? The bus lists are here. It's now 5 to 3. Come back by 3.20. Enjoy life. Vicky, you got to remember who's got your shirt. Perfect day for racing. No wind. About 70 degrees. All right, team, you got my permission to run fast today. We're not saving our energy for Thursday. You think you know the course? Because you'll be so far ahead, you won't know where the hell you're going. You better check the course. I, yeah, I, I pretty much know the course. Okay. And then there's going to be way far ahead. There's going to be a turn right. You go right, then you come this way. Yeah, that was one of the biggest things that worried me was his acceptance on the team. They they fully were accepting Connor, and and you could tell that they, they cared about Connor and they were his buddies, and that's something that I had never thought I would experience ever seeing. And to watch him, it's just, if you were to tell me this five years ago, I would have said, no, no way. <laughs> I missed the course record by two and a half seconds. And the Duke to tackle last hill. Let's bring him home. One, two, three, four. race they've ever run in high school. They never even got yeah, to I was just, you know, just tired. I just feel worn out at this point. Like, I mean, like I said, there's so much going on. I'm just, I'm just kind of bearing down right now. It's up to you. Two guys, you got to be the leaders. You really do. You got to get the team together. We just got to push this whole Brian thing out of our heads. And wait and just get our team up there. Get Nick healthy, and I think we'll be all right after that. We're just, we're killing ourselves in workouts right now, so when, when we start toning things down and peaking, I think we'll be better. At the end of a major meet, 
we have a team meeting and I say, any seniors want to speak today or any juniors want to speak today or maybe any kind of things they say are so magnificent. It's more than just winning. It's more than just, it's, it's just something special. I'm proud of everyone. The most important thing is that you accomplished your goal today. We finished as a team. That's what counts. That's all I have to say, Mr. Newton. Get on a bus. Here's my own statement for the day. You gotta believe in yourself and you gotta believe in the team. And remember, no matter who goes, somebody will eventually step up and fit the bill and take that spot. So we need a few or three or four or five guys to step up an notch and take that spot. And the premier guy is Nick. Where you at, Nick? There's no football game I don't think out there today, or is there? No. Then we can move the benches, we can run on the grass. Nick is going to run big workouts on Monday and Saturday. On Tuesday, he's riding the bike. And Wednesday, the doc says you can take the summer workout on the grass. Forget the bike. Thursday's the meet, Friday's on the bike, Saturday's running his 20, 22 miles over at the park. And you gotta step up, Nick. 26, 27. You guys aren't gonna break five minutes. What the hell's going on? You don't wanna win anything. We got nothing. As soon as you tell him he's gotta step up, it goes right in the crap. 35. Tell the guys right up front, can I trust you? You can trust me. Are you committed to excellence? I am. And do you care about me? Because I care about you. Well, if I get three things out of those kids and they got the same three out of me, then you really got something special going, really special. I'm able to get kids to do more than they really think they can do. And once they find that out, it's just Katie by the door. You gotta work at it every day. I, I think Mr. Newton's just able to help yeah, each and every person and just everyone's different and he's got a way to help each and every person and bring out the best in them. We just become smarter, better human beings while being under him just because he's got so many years of experience and he's like a father figure to so many people. We're always trying to train guys for life. I start talking about the eternal verities all the time. They never change, no matter how much kids change, society changes, truth, honor, loyalty, character. They never change. And that's what York is all about. Truth, honor, loyalty, character. Our guys, are, they've got character. I mean, if you got character, you got a chance to win. If you don't have character, no matter how good you are, you're not going to win. It would take some kids to five times to do. It takes Connor about a hundred until it's ingrained in his brain. So walking was also one of those patterns that had to be learned. He also has an area in his brain where he had a stroke. So he has a, the right side of his body is weaker. But he's had early intervention and therapy and he's worked hard his whole life. You know, the sky's the limit. He can do it. He can do anything he wants to do. <laughs> right, Connor? Yeah. yeah. That's right. The first guy from LaGrange last week at Palatine finished 11th, right behind Joe Anderson. Today we had four guys beat him, and Fry ran in flats, and he ran Fry right into the shoot post, and we would have had five guys in front of him. Three weeks ago at Peoria, he ran 14.59. And I've told you guys hundreds of times, if we can get five guys every year run 15 minutes or better, we'll count the score. It looks like we got five guys. I want a great hand for that varsity day. Well, I also want to compliment John Fisher. Where's Nikki at? Nikki? Nikki was right with the big guys, 
at the mile and a half. And then he ran out of petrol. But that's the way to run. Up front till you die. And then each week you get better. But that hat stinks. <laughs> Tell your mom, give you 10 bucks, just take your beer money and get your hat. It's always amazing things for Mr. Newton, just that we, we lose two of our top guys and, and we're right back, basically we're right back where we were before without him and, and just the depth that he's able to, cre to, to create with this program, whether Brian and Jones are on the team or not. When you coach a long time, you learn the osmosis, your feelings of how your team is. And I knew when we went to Palatine, the guys were totally distraught about all that other stuff. But this week, I'm getting this feeling that I had when Donald Sage was here. They're just, they're ready to explode. And Saturday is the day. Little guys come to you as freshmen, their self-image is all over the place. But by the time they leave, they're seniors, more they're warriors. They can do it. They got discipline. They know what to do. You gotta have a goal, you gotta have a plan. So you gotta do the little things. They learn that too. Don't forget to wear your tie tomorrow! Wear your tie tomorrow! Basically helping the runners become better individuals more so than just better runners, but just better people overall. That's what I picked up most of. That's what we try to do, Brian, that's right. And I think as a result, that's why they are becoming better runners, because he tries to make them better people first. Still there. I think coaching is, uh, Really, relationships. X's and O's, you, everybody can read a book and know the right X's and O's, but how come everybody can't win? There has to be this relationship between you and your athletes, and they, you have to have that trust and that commitment and that caring. And when you got that bond, those kids will do anything for you. Just getting every ounce, mentally and physically, out of an athlete. And the great trick, of course, is the athlete willingly does it. They don't see it as a sacrifice because they do it for somebody they know is in their corner all the time. And you don't win 24 straight state titles and a cluster of national titles without consistency and passion. And a commitment to excellence is absolutely enshrined in everything he does. Boy, that's not good. We didn't make any statements today. No, oh, that's awful. It was hard. I was feeling comfortable at first, but then uh, like the guys just went out. Like the uh, Demons and Nick and David and those. But the greatest thing in life is not in never having fallen, but in rising up again. The good Lord will pick you up and you gotta go back at it again because everybody gets knocked down. So I think acting took me out of the region on that, so I can't really do much about it. Maybe. Was that your brother? Well, you can't do that in a statement. You got to run sensibly. Better now than later. Um, and we won, so. But we didn't make a statement. Now everybody say, oh, look at Luke Ryan beat one twin. Look at that Nacho beat Joe Henderson. Oh, look at it. So come back strong next week. And don't sprint in the middle.
pressure is nothing more than a shadow of great opportunity. First thing I'll tell you is bad news, and you can't be putting anything on the goddamn internet. The twins have got a viral infection. Who knows if they're going to run the rest of the year? What else can happen to our team? And they got orders from a doctor, no running until he finds out what the hell they got. And hopefully at 4 o'clock, the doctor will tell them what they got, give them some medicine, and send them back. But if not, who knows? And the way they find that out is they check your white blood cells. If you got an infection of any kind, they're up way high to fight the infection. So they took their blood tests. They've got all kinds of white blood cells, but they don't know what kind of virus it is. So you can't give a guy medicine for this virus, and he's got that virus. Now, the first guy that puts that on the internet ought to get shot, because then all the other teams must be hell, they're done. They don't know what it is, and they don't know how bad it is at this point. They just know it's a viral infection. And I'm just falling apart because of it. Like, Saturday, first time I've ever collapsed under a, after a race, um, and I just felt exhausted. And yesterday, I just coming through the mile, and I just felt exhausted the rest of the way. And I just wanted to step off the track and give up, but Mr. Newton would kill me if I did that, so I'm not going to do that. This is our senior year. It's supposed to be like the most fun year in high school, and it's supposed to be the best year out of everyone. And we're supposed to have an amazing team this year, and everything is just falling apart. And there's nothing we can do about it at this point. But I'm hoping the doctor just finds out what kind of virus it is, gives him some pills, and lets him run. Yesterday, this is my 50th year at York, the second ship workout was the worst workout in the 50 years that I've been here. Topper of all toppers was, the big guys are busting their ass, you know what they're doing? Laying in a ditch. So they'll never leave the track the rest of this season. They're here. Then I look over yesterday on the back stretch, we're supposed to be warming up, there's no no group running, four, five, and six. Guys are all over. I look over the back stretch at Sunberg, my captain. He's jerking around. Next minute, guys are running in front of me, chasing each other, trying to pants each other, do something. Next thing I look out in the football field when they're running the grass, you're supposed to go right inside the curb. Some guys are going right across the middle of the field, right across the end zone. Every lap, I got to, God damn it, get out by the curb! I mean, I'm 76 years old. I only got so much energy. I wasted on you guys, who were supposed to be impact guys. Uh, Sheppy, have I made my point? Yes, sir. If you want to make any other points later, be my guest. You can swear whatever you want. Basically, what I want to say is that I have never been more embarrassed in my life because I saw you walk. It wasn't even one of these. It was this, walking. And that's ridiculous. Run together, work together, run hard, don't embarrass yourselves. And most importantly, respect the upper classmen. Especially when Mr. Newton says something, you listen to him. Like you said, this is his 50th year coaching. Uh, the man deserves a lot of respect, and half of you guys don't give it to him. Four, you guys are five captains, right? And you're four? All right, it's up to you to make sure your groups are working. Yeah. All right, if you two, anyone who does not run for the next two days, the entire workout, they're going on a list, that list will go to Newton, all right? Everybody's accountable. The old timers hold the new guys accountable. And the new guys on the team, they hold each other accountable. What a great job, Shep. This is what a team should be all about. Try to be a little leader, that butt. Try to be a leader. All right, sir, sound up. Go York! We formed this pack to pick up the slack! It's about time I see you got the big guys out of the ditch. Where'd they go? Finish the cool down. Who's a fool? my thought for the day. And I don't know who the hell said it. The only thing that stamps between a man and what he wants from life is often merely the will to try it and the faith to believe that it's possible. My goal tomorrow is seven guys in the top nine. So you've got to have the faith 
that is possible. I think they're ready to take on the moon. Go, 50 yards, 50 yards. For me, his main legacy is the way he used sport as a bridgehead into allowing generations of young guys to understand a little bit more about themselves. Yeah. Michael Jordan said winning is an attitude, and if you bring a good attitude to a game, you got a chance to win. Success is part of the whole thing. But success comes from within, that hard work and that feeling of being wanted and caring and doing it for the team, doing it for the school, doing it for the town, doing it for these certain people that were you know, trying to help out. It all comes together. But it's the journey, the camaraderie, the bonding, the workouts when it's windy, when it's cold. You want to be inside and it's 20 below wind chill and you're out there running in 25 quarters and 95 degree temperature. And it's your friendship and the just the togetherness that you have that you never get when you go to colleges. It's just not the same. So it's like a family, and everybody cares, and everybody's held responsible. And when we win, we win together. When we lose, we lose together. When you've been coaching as long as I have, you just know your guys think they can win. Here's the deal on Monday. There's only 12 names that went into the state two weeks ago. That's irrevocable. So I don't care if you ran eight flat today for two miles. We can't get you in a state meet. There's only 12 guys that will be eligible. We're going to see, off the way they ran today, six guys. They're deserving. I haven't seen the split yet, but rumor has it the first six York guys were within 15 seconds. I haven't got my 12 names, but I know John Fish is on that list, Montenegro's on that list, Young is on that list. And Stefani's on that list. That's four. And we have no favorites. Maybe the best guys win, but twin one, twin two, um, Joe Henderson, Nick, Octane, and Fry, I thought ran out of this world today. This is the first time this year that we've had a team. But you guys were unbelievably good today. Let's have a nice hand for our team today. All did great. We always stay, let's stick together next week and accomplish everything. Like Herb Brooks always says, great moments are born from the greatest opportunities. You all were born to be runners. You were all born. This is your time. <laughs> let's accomplish this goal. Go home. Have a great weekend. Come back strong Monday. Run on Sunday. How sweet it is. Like, sometimes he'll tell you that, like, you're not going to make it, like, but, like, he knows that he's, like, he's telling you that, so you get mad, so you'll work harder to, like, get up to the top, like, where you want to be. So, uh, all kinds of disappointment for some. But is he going to just lie there and say, oh, man. Or is he going to get up again? Time will tell and his actions will show us. Before I forget, uh, I was told to tell you on Halloween, no beer parties. I was later known as the Canyon Bandit on the team, and a lesson I'm sure Mr. Newton teaches his kids uh, the week before Halloween is do your own trick-or-treating. Five years ago, Joe Fisher, John's brother, was our seventh man. Halloween night, sees a little 12-year-old girl, steals her eggs, and then throws them at her. And some adult came by and saw the getaway car, and as soon as the principal found out, needless to say, Joe never got to run in a state meet. You can never, never do it again. He had a chance to be on a state championship team, couldn't run. So make good choices Monday. Who the hell's Steve Prefontaine? John. Yo, you woke up, John. Nice. Uh, he's the runner that was that was killed in a car crash who was really drunk. <laughs>
good runner? Yes, he was a good runner. He got fourth in the Olympics. Thank you. And you know what? He ran the last mile of the 5,000 that year in four flat. Here's what he said. To give anything less than your best is to sacrifice the gift. Which means if the good Lord gave you talent and you don't use it, you sacrifice the gift. That is such a meaningful statement. Oh, first one to ten. First one to ten wins. Oh, oh, oh. There you go. You got it. Oh, yeah, that's right. Who? Me. I make an announcement. What? Can I make a toast? No, yeah, go now. Apple. What's your go? Get them some. Under four, fifteen. What's Whoa. yours? Under four? What's yours? <laughs> four eighteen. Four twenty. For Monday. For Monday? Yeah. Pretty good goal. Yeah, I'm serious. It's outdoor, right? Mm. I gotta um, go. Twenty-five. Oh, my year, goal. Last year. Four oh seven. And yep. seriously, absolutely. I really wanna go four twenty six. When I start that race, I'm gonna go like this. And then the next stride, I'm gonna go like this. <laughs> and I'm just gonna keep going. How many counts? Where the hell are we? They're getting pinched in the middle because we're at the inside box. Six. Three and four is seven, five is 12, six is 18, and 10, 28. You can live with that. I can live with that. Nick was awesome. Hey, Nick beat one of the twins. Think about that. Stay away from the candy on October 31st. I don't want you making the same mistakes as my brother. Mr. and Mrs. Detman, please keep your sons away from the trick-or-treaters. Uh, parents, keep them away from them, because I need them to focus on the meat. And after the cross season, guys, I'll see you all in track season because we got a title to win. Thank That's you. It for John. Yeah. Woo. 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 Right, let's well, cheer for Tim. Oh, well, I mean Billy. Sorry about that. I was talking to one of my friends the other day who's not in cross country, and he was asking me about uh if I'd be running in state or not, and I told him it doesn't look good right now. And then he asked me would I rather run for another team and be able to run in state. First off, I wouldn't be close to as good because I wouldn't have gotten the training from Mr. Newton and Mr. Kern. And last night I was thinking about how I'd give pretty much anything up to run in the state meet, and I was thinking everything but my team. So, but, so Beautiful, thank you all. Beautiful. Hey, I've been around York a long time. This is one of the great moments for me and the coaches, and it should be for you. It's a forever moment. Great job, men of York. Great job. Thank you all. Up with this. He gave Stefani his chance at the regional. 
He didn't make it. We gave Lionel his chance in the regional. He didn't make it. We're going to give Young a chance in the state leader. And you deserve a chance because you're very close to both those guys. So now, and Lionel, we feel better. It's not the person. We're trying to think of the team. If we win, you'll be a happy man. You get your badge. And you can always say, I helped them win that state meet because you ran in the section. But we got to think about the team. So, Joe, here's your plan. As dumb as Nick is, he's smarter than you and the twins. He runs his own race, he conserves a little strength, he gets to the last mile, and it's foo. And Octane, as dumb as he is, is right behind him. So I want you to run Saturday with Octane and Nicky, my two resident geniuses. So your job is to have Joe right there between you. Don't let him out. You remember that? Oh. <laughs> he wasn't listening, he was daydreaming. Tonight is the last workout for the seniors in cross country ever. And it's just you guys go out there and you represent more than the seven people on the line. You represent the 50 years of tradition and the thousands of people that came before you. So pretty lucky. It's a pretty special thing. So best of luck. When you leave that locker room for the last practice, It'll never be the same. I don't care what school you go to in America, what college, you'll never get the same tender, loving care that you got here for four years. And I want you guys, myself, Coach Kern, will do anything for you guys forever. My time here on Earth is short. He's got a long way to go. Anytime. I just got a call from a guy today that graduated 15 years ago and I helped me get a, you helped me get him a job. I'm here to help you anytime I'm alive. You need a phone call, a letter, you want to just talk to somebody, Coach Garner is the same way. We're there for you guys. And I just can't tell you how happy you make me and what a wonderful job I have and what a life I've lived just being a coach. Bob Hope used to sing that song, John. Thanks for the memories. And I got so many memories in my heart, I can't tell you. Charlie, you talk a minute. I gotta... I'm done. It's more important in life to be a good person. Good things happen to good people. I'm always talking about the golden rule, doing others you want to do unto you. But these guys come and, and we talk about these things and, and those are values that when they get out in life, they can use in their profession. travel and we have to go someplace the state meet we always dress in suit and tie I, I feel that if you look sharp you feel sharp you run sharp Everybody knows we own the course. Everybody fears you guys. You don't have to be any better today than you've been the last three mates. Except for the twins. They gotta be a little better today. But they don't have to be a lot better. All right? And here's my final stuff. And it's funny, I've been working out at the fitness center out at 
before I come to York every day. And Thursday, I was riding a bike. There's a big red tree out there with the red leaves. I don't know what kind of tree it is, Doc. And uh, three weeks ago, it was full blown. And Thursday, I looked out there, and there was one goddamn leaf left on the tree. And we want seven guys that are going to be like that last leaf on the tree. You ain't going to fall off till you're in the chute. All right? You're going to keep on going. Be like Sebastian Coe. Be fearful today that you're going to waste all these months of training. Run free today. Just killed you. All right, Tommy. Special golden dollar for you. Sega Jui, a gold dollar. I'm rubbing that for luck. Hang on to that baby. Thanks, Tommy. You know what? It worked out perfect down there. At five minutes to one, we stretched a little bit, and then we started our one tens at one o'clock. Let's go, yeah. one tens! And that's when we always started. 15 minutes. It was perfect. So, all that stuff I worried about never happened. There comes one white guy. There's two white guys over the bridge. There's another white guy just came. He's in the top 20. Oh, there's two of them right there. Uh, hey, looking great. Looking great. Looking great. Looking great. Right there, right there, right there, right there. Woo! How sweet it is! Happy? I'm happy! Seven up! Woo! Who is that? Who is that? Craven. Oh, that's Craven. That's not us. Here, right here. All right, we're looking great! We're looking great! Coming by here. Two more. They're coming soon around the second, and then they run around the third and they go in. So they've run about a mile and a half right now, Cooley. And the race is three miles. What was that? Damn. They will have our 25th state championship. Oh, God, I'm playing. I'm playing. We looked good the first time by, but that's a long way to go yet. How the boys looking now? Fucking great! 1890. I don't know what happened to Nicky, but he fell behind. By the next time they're coming up to the two mile, we'll be separating the men from the boys. Yes. Yeah. 
past 10. He just passed that group in front of him, too. The four more in front of him. We had four in the first 20. Four in the first, maybe five in the first 20. Because Nick was six and Young was seven. Craven got out kicked right at the last second by Finley. Craven put his arms up like he won, and Finley just went right by him. I think we won it, Case, but I don't want to say nothing. We'll say nothing. Um, I remember how I did with how the last four weeks of my season were going. I mean, I was, what was it, like sixth at regionals or sectionals, and now I'm like sixth or seventh in the state. So I, I'm not worrying about it at all. I'm happy. Can you call your brother? He's right there with Arnold. He's walking So what were the places? Anybody see the twin? I think he was getting a reporter. Well, remember what did I say? Yeah, I know. No what? interviews till you come down here and he's down there getting an interview. <laughs> Man, nobody listens to me. Yeah, Matt. There it is. This is all unofficial. But rumor has it, without the individuals pulled, we had 64, so we'd probably come down in the high 40s, which is amazing. And we think unofficially we got five all skaters. Number 25! Yeah. Right there! So now we're gonna have the boys. It's a forever moment for them and for me. And each guy's gonna say a few words from the heart, and it's hard to hear, but I appreciate you listening. God bless these guys. All right. Matt, go first. Okay, I just want to say, you know, this has been an amazing year for us. Well, the only thing I wanted was a team, and I found the best one ever here. And I just want to say thank you uh, for everyone coming down here and supporting us. It's just amazing running up the straightaway and down there and back there and just having so many people screaming for you. And you know when you're dead and you, just everyone is rooting for you, this last 400 just makes things so much easier. So I just want to say thank you to everyone here. That's it. Have a hand for these guys again. Woo! But like we said all year, like we said for, like he has said for 50 years, the team is most important. You're looking at number 25. No other team could say that they won the 25th championship. Give him another hand. Yeah! Yeah! Woo! Woo! Nice job, man. Going to tent. We got to get our tuxes on. Great job. If we get a trophy, I get to wear the tuxes for the award ceremony and back to York and in the gym. And we started doing that. You realize that a kid will do anything to wear a tuxedo. They love to wear tuxes. Congratulations, Elmhurst York, another championship. on itself and then once you start winning and getting these awards and wearing the tuxedos the word spreads it's kind of permeated the whole town now and we're like cross country USA and, and Elmer's and you can have discipline, but our program is structured from the little guy up. America in the business world is structured from the big guy down or what's happening in America. 
all the CEOs are stealing all the money, the company goes bankrupt, the little guy's out of a job. Well, I structure my team like the little guy is just as important as the big guy. Everybody feels a part of it. Everybody wants to be on a team. When you get out in life, you'll be a winner and you'll have that team spirit. You can invest that in your company and make the company better. I would strongly encourage any parent to have their, their son try and cross country with Joe Newton. There is one quote that I'll never forget. Once a Duke, always a Duke. He's at Bryan Middle School and he's a runner there and he's going to be on your team in a couple of years. He's a seventh grader. I've been looking for you. All right. Rob. Congratulations, coach. <laughs> you can't take yourself too serious in this life. And I try to be that way, the way I act around kids. And... I think Mr. Newton definitely helped us parents along teaching these kids life lessons as far as friendships and respect and camaraderie. And all you have to do is work really hard and you can achieve your goals and nothing can stop you. You know, we take everybody, and, and whoever comes out, uh, we're here to, to help them become the, the man that uh, we we think that they can be by the end of four years. Our goal all year was we were trying to get seven All-Staters. We ended up getting five All-Staters, and poor Nick was 26, and he missed by one spot. We almost had our record when Donald State was here. We got six, we got five, all right? I received about 20 phone calls this last week telling me about how great St. Charles North was gonna be, and we had to look out for those guys. Well, let me tell you about the scores. We scored 49, which is, I think, the third lowest we've ever scored. Valentine was second with 132, and St. Charles and North North Bombers were 175. This is one of the greatest North teams of all time. You just work as hard as you can, whatever happens. If a man does his best, what else is there? And as we went through the season, it became obvious that he's not going to make it into the top seven. But I have seven of these right now. And I want to give this one to somebody who's been incredibly special to me. And I'm going to miss him. He almost made it. Almost did. And he wanted one in the worst way. And he's got one now. John Fisher. It wasn't just getting it. And, and I have a picture that I had a screensaver of the hug of Mr. Kern and, and John. And, and it's just wonderful. Well, then John took the microphone. And, and, this, <laughs> and address the crowd, and as I'm looking around, and I'm, I'm, I'm looking at people just awestruck, you know, watching him, and, and you realize what an impact this kid has got on people. It's, it's, it's amazing. I'm really proud of everyone. Uh, I'm, this is my first time getting a medal. I wish my grandfather was here. Um, a few months ago, he um, passed away. He, he died of colon cancer, and I miss him very much. And, and I'm congratulate Mr. Newton. Get the, I want everybody to give another round of applause to Mr. Newton. I'll miss warming up with him, but I know that he's prepared for the world out there that's a little bit different than cross country, and he'll be successful wherever he goes. Joe missed out on the medal. John got the medal. Joe should have run in the state meet. John couldn't. John got the medal. I will miss John Fisher. Cross country is like life. No, he doesn't pick favorites. We're all his favorites. He loves each and every one of us.
I love what I'm doing. I love what I'm doing. That's my job, it's my passion. Job, passion. I love what I'm doing. I love what I'm doing. I love what I'm doing. I love what I'm doing.